I started out as a painter and when I was at the University of Akron, even in New York, I was a freelance illustrator. But when I decided to uh, make a mark on my own, I saw this opportunity because no one, or well, very few people were making statements three-dimensionally. It's the absence of the eyes that actually draws you into the piece, and that's a technique that was developed during the 15th century in what was Benin, Southwest Africa, in their vessels and vases. And they put the images of their tribal leaders and spiritual leaders on the surfaces of the vessels for ceremonial purposes. And it was only until I applied that technique to what I was doing in clay that these pieces started to come to life, so to speak. I was always intrigued with uh, what was happening in France, that whole nouveau movement, the sensuality of it all, and the organic feel of the shapes and forms that was created during that time. I thought that it would be interesting if I combined that with that African uh, approach, because I'm not targeting any indigenous group. I wanted to suggest Africa in general, but I also wanted to include the influence of Europe and I coined the phrase the African Nouveau. Well, my day begins at probably about 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning, and I'm going back and forth from this area here where we're actually creating the pieces to the kiln room where we're firing pieces on a constant basis to another part of my studio where we actually do the finishing. What we have here is what I call soft, molds, plaster molds that I make here in the studio. We can pour uh, the arms separately, the torso separately, the heads. After that, we model the pieces up in clay. These pieces on the table here are actually drying, air drying, which is probably going to take about a couple of weeks, after which they will be taken to the kiln room where they are fired. I don't really work on one piece exclusively. So over a period of about two, three, four weeks, depending on the level of difficulty, I can pretty much finish a grouping. Now a grouping is anywhere from eight to 10 pieces. When they're finished, they're called a series. They're all unique. And it's because I, yeah, I have hands-on on all of these. So I've had requests, someone might see something and they, well, I want one like that. That's much too difficult to do. I just, you know, whatever comes, out comes out. Yeah, we just opened up the kiln this morning and it's, it's still cooling down. It's a three-day fire. It's one day soaking, one day actually firing, and then one day cooling off. Uh, out there at uh, Higgins Heart, they sell a lot of these pieces because of the, the stripe. This particular piece is popular because of the detail in the etching. Originally, these markings were stylized images of Nigerian gold weight symbols. And so I took some of these images like the crocodile, the turtle, and incorporated in this. It seemed to work well with the flow, depending on the contour of the body, and that's what we're trying to, to follow, just the contour of the body. We dip some of the pieces in corrosive to get a certain kind of a patina. Gives it a metallic, heavy metal, rust look. I found out in African societies they're really big on adornment. And that's a large part of who they are. So on all my pieces there's always some form of adornment that finishes the piece. All these different colors and it's, it's a chemical reaction that takes place because when we fire these beads, we mix iron powder with the beads and when it fires, the iron powder oxidizes and it gives off these chemicals that soaks into the, uh, the beads. I do a show and uh, a lady says, well, how much is the, uh, the necklace? And I'll tell her, I said, well, the necklace is uh, $10,000, but you get the sculpture with it. You know. <laughs> I had a chance uh, a few years ago to meet Glenn Hart of Higgins Hart International. He expressed an interest in my work, uh, bought a couple of pieces at that time. 
I believe they had some success when he returned to the gallery and selling those pieces. He called me and over a period of a couple of years we've developed quite a relationship where now Higgins Heart International, they are handling and selling my work with Nash sculptures exclusively. Well, they're like your children because they come from me. And so at a certain point, like your children, you push them out into the world.